Good morning, Seattle. How are you doing today? It's great to be with you. My name is Miss Phillip, and I'm a second grade teacher at a school called Daniel Bagley Elementary in the North Green Lake area. And today I'm going to teach you about some measuring. I'm going to teach you three different things. First, I'm going to teach you how to play a game called the $1 exchange game. Then I'm going to review some coins and values. And then I'm going to shift and we're going to talk about measuring using um, the metric system, grams and kilograms. Okay, are you ready? All right, let's start out with a little bit of skip counting because skip counting will help you when you are counting your money. Okay, and we are going to count by fives. And I'm going to use this hundreds grid behind me, and you can count with me. And if you have one at home, um, please take it out and get ready. All right, here we go. We're going to start at zero. Zero, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. And we're going to stop there, and that's usually my signal for stop in the classroom. Now we're going to go ahead and count by tens. Ready? We're going to start at zero and we're going to end at a hundred. Here we go. Zero, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, one hundred. Stop. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of review with money and the amounts and values of some coins. And one of the things you need to remember is that a coin, the size of a coin doesn't necessarily mean, have anything to do with its value. A size, the smallest coin isn't necessarily gonna be worth the least, and the largest coin isn't necessarily gonna be worth the most. So we have to look at the coins remember them and we can read because it always says the value on there right i have the coins up here and this one is the penny and it is the copper colored one and it starts with the p and sometimes you will see a p in some tests and that means that it is worth one cent Okay, let's move on to the nickel. The nickel starts with an N, and sometimes you will see it as an N, and it is has a value of five cents. Five cents. Okay, and then we have the dime, and the dime is the smallest one, and it, sometimes it's written as a D, and it has a value of ten cents. Ten cents. And then we go to the quarter, and the quarter has a value of 25 cents, and it starts with a Q, and sometimes you'll see it as a Q. So when you think of the quarter, four of them will make 100 cents, 100 pennies, or one dollar. And the reason it's called a quarter is because if you think about the whole, and you break it up into four parts, this is a quarter value and this is worth 25 cents so let's take it a step back coins are written in cents oh, it's already up here coins are written in cents and the cents symbol is a c with a line through it and it sounds like an s and that is also known as the soft C sound. And it's because an E comes after it when it's written. Sense. Say sense. 
Okay. And then we have the bills. And these are the bills. We have one, five, ten, twenty, and then we have a hundred dollar bill, which I don't actually have one of those, unfortunately, to show you. But you will have some in your math materials that you're getting that you can cut out to use for this game. Bills, and we say bills in dollars. We measure bills in dollars, and the symbol for the dollars is an S with a line through it. Say dollars. Okay, so we have our dollars, which is the paper like money, and then we have our coins, our cents, which is the metal. Okay, the penny is the one that is copper, it's the darker one. And all the others are silver that we will have today. Okay? All right, let me see if I went over everything we need to know. Great, so let's move on to the I can statements. And I can exchange coins for a $1 bill, and that's going to be the game. And it goes the other way as well. You can exchange a $1 bill for coins. I can find different combinations for the value of a hundred pennies, a hundred pennies or a hundred cents. A hundred pennies equals one dollar. A hundred cents equals one dollar. So it takes a hundred pennies to make one of these. Okay, and that leads right into our game, the one dollar exchange game. So for the $1 exchange game, you will need, uh, there's an example of how to make the exchanges. You will need the place value mat. These are the directions that were sent out. You will need a place value mat. And it looks very, very similar to the place value mat you use for the base 10 blocks. And this game is very similar to the base 10 exchange game. And you're going to be making exchanges, and this is the one cent column where the one is. This is the ten cent column where the long is or the ten value. And then this is the one dollar column where the flat is or the hundreds column. Okay, very similar to this one. Okay. So you have your one cent, your dime, your penny, your dime, 10 cents, and your dollar, 100 cents. Okay, so you will need that. You will need two dice. And you will need your bank of 20 pennies, 20 dimes, pennies, the darker one, 20 dimes, the smallest of the silver, or 10 and then one dollar bill. Okay, you will need these to play this game. And we are going to shift over to the document camera and play this game together now. Visible. Maybe I'll pull down one of the shades. Okay. So when you're making an exchange, it is very, very similar to when you are regrouping. Regrouping. Some of you might have already learned that. So you're making an exchange, and when you make an exchange, you move the tens the in, from the one spot if you get a 10 into the tens column just like you did with the daily counting of your straws and just like you have done before using your base 10 blocks when you get a 10 and it becomes a two digit number it needs to move over a column into the the tens column okay let's go ahead and play so when you roll, you are going to be counting up.
from the largest number. You are going to roll the two dice, and the object of the game is to get uh, the $1 bill first. And you take turns, and you can play with two people, or you can play with three people. If there's two people in the family, you could play with. And if you only have one place value net, you can make another one like this. And remember that this is the one cent, and this is the dime, penny, dime, and the dollar. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and roll, and we'll get started. And there's also a model on the directions to show you how to make that exchange. Okay, here we go. So I roll the five and a one, and I'm gonna go ahead and count up from the five, five, six. You always wanna count up from the larger number. So I'm gonna take out six pennies. One, two, three, four, five, six, six pennies. Okay, now I'm gonna roll again. Well, if you're playing with someone at home, the next person will go. And now I rolled a three and a one. So I'm going to go ahead and count up from the three. Three, one. Three, four. Sorry. So now I'm going to add four pennies. One, two, three, four. And I always double check. And now I'm looking and it looks like I have a lot of pennies one cents in the one cent column. So I'm going to go ahead and count them. I'm going to count by twos because I like to skip count. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So I have a group of ten. So it's like making a bundle. And I'm going to go ahead and find my dime. And I'm going to take my dime and I'm going to put it on the mat. And I'm going to grab the pennies and I'm going to put them back into my bag. And now I have ten cents on my mat because six plus four equals 10. Now remember, I'm trying to get the $1, and the first person that gets the $1, which is equal to 100 cents, 100 pennies, or 10 dimes, wins the game. Okay, so I'm going to keep going. I'm going to model one more time. And now I have a 6 and a 1, so I'm going to count up from the 6. 6, 7. So I'm going to get 7 pennies. 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, six, seven. Go one more time. Six and five. Ooh, that is a little more challenging because they're both both big numbers. I'm going to start at the six. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and that's it. Eleven. So I know that ten plus one also equals eleven. So I'm going to get a dime. And a one cent, and I'm going to put it in the one cent column, and I'm going to put the dime in the ten cent column. Ready? Let's do one more. Three, four. So I get four pennies. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to put them in there, and now I see I think I have more than ten again, so I'm going to count. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So I'm going to go ahead and take out my ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. I'm going to put it back into my bank, and I'm going to grab another dime. So now we're going to count this collection, and we're going to start with the largest coins first. Ten, twenty, thirty, and then we're going to go to the next value, which in this case is the penny, thirty-one, thirty-two. So I have thirty-two cents. Thirty-two cents. And I am not quite at the dollar yet, but I'll be there soon if I keep going. Okay, so with that said, we're going to transition to our last lesson. And our last lesson is on uh, mass. The last part of our lesson will be on measuring mass. And you might know of this as weight. Um, but when we're thinking about measuring what something weighs, we're actually thinking about the mass that it has. Okay, let's go ahead and read the I can statement. I can read scales in grams and kilograms. I can estimate and compare the mass, weight, we can think of it as weight, of different objects. Okay, so the mass is what quantifies the amount of matter present in an object. 
Okay. And uh, the metric system is what we're going to be using. And the metric system consists of kilograms and grams. And you might have already heard about the metric system when you learned about meters and centimeters, because meters and centimeters are also part of the metric system. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and show you what a unit of a gram looks like. And it is right here. This would be, and I got some flour at home because I've been baking, and a lot of us have been baking at home as well, making some lovely bread. And I've had some leftover flour. And I brought some in, and I put some in a kilogram bag. This is a kilogram. And I put some in a gram bag and this is a gram so we have kilogram and gram and as you can see gram is the smaller of the two it's less okay you can also think of uh, weight and mass is measured with pounds which you might be more familiar with in the American system it's the standard system but if you are from Canada or if you've been to Canada they use kilograms and grams and so knowing that the gram is very small, you need to think of some things that might be that small. So I have a table full of things back here. And I am in my classroom today because I am moving buildings and I have a designated time to come in. So I came in and I found some things that we can use to measure uh, mass. Uh, first, we'll have to use a scale and this is a digital scale. And it's a digital scale because it has digits and you program it for what you want. And I'm going to program this for grams. And then here is a pan scale. And this has boat units of measurement on there, uh, pounds and um, grams and kilograms. So this is the kilogram here. And you could see the kilogram is about two, um, a little over two pounds. So in order to measure, you'd want to put it on a surface that is um, solid, I mean uh, level. I would put it in there and it would measure one kilogram. Okay? And then my scale in grams, and it's moving right now because I'm lifting it, I would use it to measure the gram, the gram bag, and it's one gram. So we can think of some things as like paper. We can measure paper in grams because it's light. And perhaps we can measure rocks in kilograms because they're a little heavier. So you have to think about it, which unit you would use to measure what? Grams and kilograms. Another thing you can think of is things that might be light like this. Pig. It's about the same size of this bag of flour, but this pig is not as dense. It doesn't have as much to it. It doesn't have as much in the a matter to it because it's made of stuffing that's pretty light. So it would not measure a gram in the scale. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead for the last... Um, 10 seconds, 10, 20 seconds, and ask you to think about what at home you can use to measure, use to measure grams, maybe a glue stick, and what at home could you measure for kilograms? Maybe a bottle of sanitizer. All right, well you have a good rest of your day. Remember, you're using the metric system and you're measuring in grams and kilograms. All right, have a good rest of your day.